Hey there guys, welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews and in my and for my continuing reviews for The Mandalorian. So for this review is gonna be season two, episode three, The Heiress. So this particular episode rounds out what we ha- saw started in the prior episode of The Mandalorian returning the frog lady to her husband so that they could fertilize their egg and proceed with the um, continuation of their species. And also the continuation of the Mandalorian's quest to find the other Jedi, like the child. So um, he's looking, still looking for other Mandalorians, and it turns out he does meet up with some by chance in that he gets captured by some Aqualish pirates, I guess, so to speak, or boaters or whatever. And um, he's rescued by some Mandalorians, and as it turns out, it is Bo-Katan Kreese of... Um, Star Wars Rebels fame and I think briefly Star Wars of Clone Wars fame so she's trying to reclaim the, their home planet of Mandalore which under um, the Mandalorian's assumption is a um, inhospitable planet but it's possible that it is misinformation represented by the Empire so that no one ever visits that planet one of those things where if the Empire can't have it then no one can so uh, Bo-Katan is trying to rebuild um enough forces so that they can return to the planet and reclaim it as their own. So, um, she's trying to build up an army, gain weapons and all of that, so in return for helping the Mandalorian on his mission, she, uh, she asks that the Mandalorian helps take the steal weapons, but as it, as it turns out, she wants him to help her steal a transport. So they end up doing that, and overall very good action sequences as far as the four Mandalorians feeling like 10 so it kind of gave that whole Star Wars um, Rogue One vibe of making one man feeling like a hundred so I kind of like that whole thing the whole transport stealing sequence was all excellent um, and as it turns out that transport was an Empire transport that is directly related to um, the what's his name with the dark saber so overall a very interesting bit of um tie in there and it's also interesting that bo katan is searching for the dark saber she doesn't not or she does not want to believe that he has it but as it turns out he does so um there's a bit of speculation and hope that i'm hoping that she has to team up with the mandalorian again so that um they can take him down and get the dark saber back but um, as a payoff for this particular episode, um, we learned that ah- Ahsoka Tano is still hiding out and she's on, or she's supposedly staying in the um, city called, in a city called Kaladin on the forest planet Corvus, according to Bo Katan. So, reading online is some people are saying that it's going to be a test for the Mandalorian to see if she can, to see if he can make it to Ahsoka, that she might not actually be there. It would be, unusual for Bo Katan to release that information so easily, but part of it might be that she's actually there and in order for the Mandalorian to meet Ahsoka is that um, he has to fight his way to, through a lot more than is that she's letting on. So we'll see how all of that goes and how that introduces her Ahsoka to the Mandalorian. Um, so my bit of speculation is that the next episode is going to be the Mandalorian making it to um, Corvus and um, he's going to make his way through the um, city or temple or guards or whatever Ahsoka has set up so that she's not easily found and the, pa- the spoiler or the teaser for episode 5 is going to be that she's in that room and we see an outline of her or she's in some sort of um, a hideout where she's going to let him in so overall it was this was one of the, this is probably the shortest episode so far of the season, and maybe of all the episodes I didn't go back and check, but um, it was a relatively short episode, but um, packed in that we get this, we get the introduction of Bo-Katan and what she's doing with Mandalore, and we do get the side bit of um, information where not all Mandalorians follow the same creed, so apparently... Um, Din Jaren is part of a Mandalorian sect that's ultra conservative and like ultra old school Mandalorian where they're not allowed to really remove their helmet ever basically unless they're alone 
while Bo Katan is part of a, a newer generation or a different sect where they are allowed to remove it but still hold to the Mandalorian ideal, so less traditional and more modern, I suppose. So that was an interesting bit of um, comparison and insight that um, she was able, or Bo Katan and her, the two other Mandalorians with her, were able to real figure out just by looking at him that he's part of the traditionalist, um, old school Mandalorian way, so, and while they may not be, so we'll see how that plays off going forward, or if um, maybe it helps Bo-Katan deal with uh, maybe Death Watch or any other Mandalorian sex and bringing them together, because at the end they are all honorable Mandalorians in their own way. So that's all there is for this particular review, that's really all there is to say, so we'll s the current speculation is that we're going to see Ahsoka in episode 5, so the next episode 4 is going to be another build or a bridge episode between episodes, so we'll see, kind of see if they produce a, move the plot along, or if maybe Bo-Katan's information was more of a test for the Mandalorian to see if he can actually make it to um, Ahsoka, or maybe it's just a test so that it gives Bo-Katan time to reach Ahsoka and let her know that the Mandalorian Din Jaren has a Jedi that she might be interested in meeting and keeping safe for the future. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can always find me and get in touch with me by DM or on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next